welcome back to the MOOC course on design of electronic converters. We were discussing the module of gate drivers and uh, we had uh, looked the basic concepts of gate drivers, then we had also looked into optocoupler based gate drivers. We had also seen the data sheet of one optocoupler based gate driver. Then we also saw over current protection um, and how it is incorporated in gate drivers uh, which is your DSAT protection. Now, today we will look into another uh, thing associated with your uh, gate drivers which is called as your bootstrapping method. It is a method which is uh, again very widely used for your gate drivers uh, for driving MOSFETs and IGBTs. The bootstrapping can be explained with the help of this uh, one leg of an edge bridge. Now, this we have been uh, taking as an example again and again. So, here uh, we had seen that for uh, this lower MOSFET, the source of it is non-floating that means it is fixed, it does not change. As we turn on and turn off the device, we have to apply gate pulse over here. And uh, that is with respect to the source uh, whose potential is fixed. Whereas, we had seen that, that when uh, we look into the upper MOSFET, which is also called as the high side gate drive. So, for this the problem happens is that this source point it is floating. And why it, it is floating that also we had seen. So, when you turn on this uh, lower MOSFET, this point gets connected to this reference and when this upper MOSFET is on at that time the same point gets connected to this uh, DC bus rail. Okay, and this is usually going to be a high voltage. So, this point's potential is uh, going to be changing from your uh, high supply voltage to your this reference voltage. And whatever gate we have to apply here that has to be with respect to this floating source. And so, driving this MOSFET and providing the supply for uh, this uh, high side driver circuitry is a problem. And for that we had seen we need uh, floating supplies and uh, we can use isolated uh, DC to DC converter ICs which are available um, and uh, specifically they are designed for driving the um, uh, for using with drivers. Now, uh, that is a very good method although using an isolated uh, DC to DC converter IC and uh, providing the floating supply using that it has very good levels of noise immunity. But the problem that happens is that, that it is little expensive method. We have to separately use a isolated DC to DC converter and all the components associated with them whether you are using a ready made IC or you are making of your own there is a cost associated with it. So, uh, could there be any cheaper method of getting the same floating supply and bootstrapping method exactly does that. So, how it works is that it uses this uh, diode which is your bootstrapping diode, it is called as DBST is the name that I have given and uh, then there is another capacitor uh, which is your bootstrapping capacitor, it is denoted by the symbol CBST. And now we have this low voltage supply VG which is providing the supply to this low side driver circuitry. Now, this can be of the level of your uh, 15 volt or 18 volt whatever is uh, required for driving this, this MOSFET. So, now what will happen is that this DBST is uh, going to turn on whenever this is off. Okay. That means, whenever this is on the lower one is on at that time the DBST is going to conduct. So, if your T plus is off that means your T minus is on your DBST this is going to conduct and then what will happen is that that your it will 
discharge this capacitor CBST through this path and here it will come and then if this MOSFET is conducting it can complete its path through this or uh, there may be some inductor or load that may be connected over here. So, in that case if uh, this diode is conducting and the MOSFET is not conducting in that case it can also complete its path through this load or the inductor. So, then that is how your CBST is going to get charged. So, your CBST is charged and it is charged to the voltage Vg. It is going to be charged to the voltage Vg and now um, at that time you, you have to note down that as I told this is off. So, this is not playing any role. Then when your T plus turns on at that time what happens is that your this one starts to block because uh, here your voltage becomes very high this is supposed to turn on. So, this is already off and this voltage is uh, going to be higher. So, uh, over here you will have um, I mean your DBST stop conducting that means it will start to block. So, DBST is blocking. So, as a result now what will happen is that that your this capacitor now this is off this is not present. So, the CBST will now supply this high side driver circuitry. So, that is how then this uh, VG whatever voltage that is required this uh, high side driver receives its power from the charge that was stored in CBST and that is how this um, this high side driver and this MOSFET is driven. So, um, what we observe here is that that the, this same floating supply is now obtained using this bootstrapping method and we do not have to connect an external floating supply. So, that is that inexpensive method of bootstrapping. Now, let us um, uh, look into it a little bit more of the details that how this kind of a circuitry can be realized. So, this is an example that is shown of how these bootstrapping plus this driver arrangement all that can be realized in an electronic circuit. So, here what we have is uh, this uh, one leg which this is actually a buck converter and uh, this is also like a one leg of an inverter of an edge bridge, but however, the MOSFET is not required because uh, this is your buck converter. So, this part is your buck converter you can see over here this is your buck converter circuit you have the L and C you have the diode over here and then this is the MOSFET. And uh, this uh, there is the capacitor associated with your input and uh, on the output side you have the LC filter of the buck converter. Now, on the driver side what we have is this gate resistor then this is the totem pole arrangement. So, this is your totem pole. So, you have this NPN and your PNP connected together then further what we have is this bootstrapping diode DBST and this bootstrapping capacitor CBST. And uh, here we have got two resistors let us uh, give them the name R1 and R2. And further we have got uh, MOSFET QLS ok and uh, this is your PWM controller uh, which is uh, going to give the gate pulses. And there this uh, Vg is the supply voltage that is required to drive this MOSFET. 
And then we have this another capacitor which is uh, just to absorb whatever transients and noises that may be there, uh, one capacitor that is connected to VG. Now, this point, this VG point is connected to the gate of this MOSFET. Now, you can see that this is an N type MOSFET. So, that means if this is high with respect to your source, then only this will be on, else it will be off. So, let us see the operation now, how this circuit works. So, this is let us say is your gate pulse, uh, this is your when it is low and when this is high. So, initially let us say this is low, that means this MOSFET is supposed to be off. At that time, what will happen is that at uh, this part is uh, low and here this is connected to high. So, that means what there is substantial voltage between this gate and source of this MOSFET. So, between your gate and source there will be sufficient voltage and that voltage will turn on this QLS. And so, when your QLS is off that means, this is you can consider it to be like a short. So, R 2 is shorting that means, this is, go, is being pulled down. So, if this is being pulled down because this is already low ok, because uh, this is off state, off state this is low. So, this is pulled down using uh, R 2 and uh, so here uh, uh, what we see is that if it is pulled down no NPN is not going to turn on what will turn on is PNP. So, PNP is going to turn on and uh, so this will discharge whatever was the gate to source region capacitances and um, yeah, whatever was the charge associated with it that is going to discharge through this PNP. So, what we have is this is going to conduct like this and uh, this is what is the connection and this is pulled down. Now, that is uh, to turn off the MOSFET, now what happens to this capacitor? So, this capacitor then is going to be uh, this DBST is on and it charges through this capacitor, this charges the capacitor CBST and it completes its path through this way ok. So, here we have our charging current for the capacitor CBST and this capacitor gets charged to your VG voltage. Then further what happens when uh, this uh, goes high? So, this is going to go high now. So, when this goes high, this is already connected to high that is VG and the source is also high. So, then uh, this gate to source the difference is not going to be significant. So, this is going to be off. So, this is off and then uh, so there is no path. So, now what will happen is that this CVST will start to discharge and it has the path through R1 and uh, then uh, this points get connected to VG and so as it is getting connected to VG this is going to be turned on NPN and so this is on and so your uh, this this is turned on and so here this is what is the uh, path for your this is what is the path for your MOSFET to turn on through NPN. And what we observe is that now this CBST is this other potential is connected to this point. As this MOSFET is on, this is going to be at the potential of V in. This is at the potential of uh, V in now. And here this is uh, this point's potential is uh, V in plus V g and 
over here the potential is just Vg. So, we can see that this dBST will then start to block. Okay. So, um, this is how your uh, this CBST then supplies the whatever is the driving power the gate drive power that is required to turn on this upper MOSFET and this diode DBST is blocking at that time. Now from this few things that we can note down is that first of all there is no isolation. There is we are not giving any isolation between the, the driver side and the power electronic side. And also what we observed is that when this uh, device was off at that time the CBST was uh, getting charged and it was completing its path through the power electronics circuit. So, whatever was the noise that was uh, that will be present here the power side noise that will also enter into the control side as well as the driver side and this may disrupt the functioning of the controller and also the driver. Okay. So, the problem is that your low noise immunity. Then one more thing that you can see is that a leg type arrangement is needed. You can observe here that it completed this path, this charging path, it completed to through this. So, uh, then this kind of an arrangement is needed. If this type of a MOSFET and a diode or both of this as one leg, this kind of an arrangement is not there, then um, your this bootstrapping method cannot be used. So, you cannot use it for any power electronic circuit blindly you have to look into it whether bootstrapping method can be used for that particular circuit or not. Of course, it is true that many many power electronic circuits it can be used, but still there may be some circuits where it may not be applicable. So, that is why you have to be cautious where um, your if this edge bridge type arrangement is not present, then you have to be careful whether this bootstrapping method can be used there or not. Then next thing that you can observe is that that your it can be used for low driving requirements. What I mean by that is that if whatever is the gate current that is required to turn on this MOSFET if this uh, gate drive requirement is very high as the ratings of your MOSFET or of IGBTs they are available for 1700 volts and many times their current uh, capability is also very high and we may need very um, I mean little bit higher levels of uh, gate currents. So, that cannot be supplied using this kind of a bootstrapping capacitor arrangement. So, there we have to have uh, floating um, supply separate isolated DC to DC converters to supply the gate drive requirements. So, but uh, for your low power range or your medium power, uh, power electronic applications this bootstrapping method can be used. So, it, it has some limitations, but still it works and it is used in many practical circuits and uh, it is a very inexpensive method of uh, driving your power electronic devices. So, the key points of uh, this lecture is that bootstrapping is an inexpensive method to obtain the floating supply and it can be used uh, with your optocoupler based uh, gate driver ICs and other uh, gate driver ICs can also have the bootstrapping um, involved uh, in it to obtain the floating supply. Uh, but uh, there are some issues like it does not give any isolation and low noise immunity and it is applicable for a leg type arrangement only. So, you have to be careful while using you using bootstrapping method in your driver circuit. Thank you.